to week two of our series Christianity 101 and if you haven't checked out the previous one please go over to our YouTube channel and just check it out so basically the point of this series is to help you guys understand basic Christian concepts and for some of these things we assume that are obvious but they're really not they're not so obvious so today I want to talk about something that I think all of us will identify with. so last year this time we've just come from Easter last Sunday was Easter and last year this time we had just gotten into this pandemic and guys were pretty confused but you know the faith levels are still pretty high we're like yeah it's gonna take a few weeks and then we're gonna be over it a year later we find ourselves in a space of frustration of anger of bitterness and guys are like where is god in all this so for many people faith has moved from this level to this level and it's even gone below zero like people are not even sure if there's a god anymore and one of the questions that have been asked over and over again is why does a good god allow suffering now that's not an easy question to answer but i'm gonna do my best to try and answer it for you today so allow me to read a scripture um before we get into that conversation so the scripture i'm reading from uh it comes from luke chapter 20 verse 9 to 15 and this is what it says now jesus turned to the people again and told them this story a man planted a vineyard leased it to tenant farmers and moved to another country to live for several years at the time of the grape harvest he sent one of his servants to collect his share of the crop but the farmers attacked the servant beat him up and sent him back empty-handed so the owner sent another servant but they also insulted him, beat him up, and sent him away empty-handed. A third man was sent, and they wounded him and chased him away. What will I do? The owner asked himself. I know, I will send my cherished son. Surely they will listen to him. But when the tenant farmers saw his son, but when the tenant farmers saw his son, they said to each other, Here comes the heir to the estate. Let's kill him and perhaps keep the estate for ourselves. So they dragged him out of the vineyard and murdered him. What do you suppose the owner of the vineyard will do to them? Jesus asked. Now, this is a very weird story. <laughs> and Jesus had a had this this way of talking to people through stories. So it's a very Middle Eastern thing to do. These days not so much, but even if you go to Middle East even now, they still like talking in parables. They put things in hidden meanings and stories so that you actually listen. So by the time you, it hits you that it's you who's been talked about, then you've actually gotten the point of what it is they're trying to convey. So the people who are listening to Jesus' story at this point would have understood what it is that he was trying to say to them. But it's not obvious to us. So let's put a pause on that and let's... I'm still trying to answer this question of why a good God allows suffering. So let me take a different angle to this. How did we get here to this point where we're talking about suffering? So at the beginning of it, we go back to the book of Genesis. At the beginning, God creates this amazing world and he says that everything is good. And when you read Genesis 1, we don't see pain, we don't see suffering. Actually, life just seems to be thriving. But then this God didn't create us to be robots. He actually created us with a, a, a free will. Here's the thing about love. God created us to love him. But for it to be love, there has to be a choice. Either we choose him or we don't. So you can't say you love someone if you didn't have a choice in that matter. So God loves you for a fact because he knows everything about you. The good, the bad, the ugly, all the things that you, you know, we like showing the best side of ourselves. But God can genuinely say he loves you because he knows you more than anybody else. So his will was for us to love him back, but he couldn't force us to love him. So what did he do? He gave us free will. But now here comes the problem. With a free will and this beautiful garden God had given us everything, everything was working out. He gave us only one rule and he said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Like we had one rule guys, one and we failed. <laughs> so here's the problem. Having free will means that we have an opportunity to choose. 
up till this point everything was good because god had determined what good is but the moment we broke that rule then the burden to determine good and evil fell on us and that's where we find ourselves today because i get to choose what i think is good somebody else gets to choose what is good and unfortunately our understanding of good is very limited there are things that make sense to me but they're not necessarily good because it's limited to my knowledge my experiences the things i have been through the things that make sense to me right now we find ourselves in the middle of a pandemic and it's painful um the the physical problems are going through the health problems the economic problems but guys corona is somebody's free will somebody sat down and created this virus so for you you might be thinking you know what me i'm using my my free will to do the right thing i'm using my free will to you know love others do charity work care for the needy but somebody else is using their free will to murder people to commit heinous crimes so if we're going to exist in a world of free will how do we determine that your free will is more important than someone else's so it's what we're trying to say here is that we want to go to step in when things are not working for us but we want him to live when we are the ones who are allowed to make these decisions and unfortunately it doesn't work like that so in a complicated <laughs> way of saying this the reason why we have a world of suffering is because god gave us free will so he can't interfere with the choices that we make but i know this when you're asking this question and in the midst of pain you're feeling real suffering you don't want a logical answer you don't want a, an answer that makes sense in your mind you're looking for an answer that makes sense in your heart so let me bring it closer to where we are at <sighs> a good god allows free will a good god allows you to have a choice a good god allows you to experience life to the fullest but a loving father knows that you're going to make these mistakes a loving father comes after you a loving father goes out of his way let's go back to the story of this uh, tenants this owner of this vineyard is god and he he has given us authority over this space and the only thing he asks of us is that we would have space for him in our lives and he sends teachers and prophets and different people to point us to him but we're not willing to listen until finally he decides you know what let me send my son perhaps they will listen to him and the thing about jesus is that he doesn't come into this world as royalty he doesn't come born in a castle with servants and all these things happening for him he comes to the dirt he comes to your level he comes and gets to where it is that we are the book of isaiah describes jesus as somebody who's familiar with suffering it talks about how he's gone through rejection it talks about how um he went through pain he was he was rejected he was despised he was betrayed and there's all these things that it describes and that doesn't sound like a god who's sitting in the clouds just watching people suffering it sounds like a god who cares enough to come to where we are at now in my few years of being alive <laughs> I've gone through different kinds of pain. I've gone through heartbreak. Most people can identify, you know. I've gone through heartbreak. <laughs> I've gone through physical pain, different kind of diseases where you you just, you know, you're ready to give up because your body is in so much pain. I've gone through grief. You know, this that kind of pain that just your heart just feels like it's about to disconnect and just like I've gone through heart of many kinds. Depression, whatever it is that we can call suffering. But in those moments, I didn't need to be told logical things. I didn't need an intellectual uh, answer as to why I'm suffering. I just needed an understanding. I just needed comfort. And I found that it's in those times that I got to connect with God at a different level. Now, we live in a broken world, and because this world is broken, pain and suffering is our reality that's the truth guys unfortunately that's the truth until we leave this planet we're still stuck with the consequences of the choices that we make so pain and suffering is is real but that pain doesn't have to always be negative two things that i've found when i'm going through a hard space two things that i've found when you know life looks like it's breaking apart the first thing is this that you that i have a god that understands so he's not 
left me to suffer by myself. He's actually with me in that pain. So I'm not alone. It makes it easier when you know that you're not going through these things by yourself. God has come to your level and is like, I'm providing a way out for you. So we're not, we're not uh, being removed from this earth. We are still here and we'll still have to deal with these things, but we're not dealing with them alone. But the second thing is this. The pain and the suffering is not the end of the story. God has a way of bringing beautiful things out of a very hard situations. When you look at Jesus, he was beaten to almost the point of death. He was crucified on a cross. But all that, what beauty did it bring? It allowed me and you to reconnect with God at a level that we had not before. Look at childbirth. Childbirth is painful. Okay, I don't know. I've not had to go through it. But, you know, you see people in labor and you're just like, yeah, that doesn't look like fun. They're not smiling and they don't look excited about it. But the joy of the child when they hold the child makes all the difference. And so pain doesn't always have to be negative. Pain can be what directs your attention to God. Pain can be what but something good. All these innovations that we have in the world today, they came from a point of inconvenience. They came from a point of suffering of some sort. Nobody just sat one day and decided, you know what? We need to create medicine. We need to create this and that and the other because there was no pain. So it doesn't always have to be negative. And I know this is a very hard conversation to be having. So I may not understand where you are at at this point. I may not understand the pain that you're going through, but there's a God who does. And so my encouragement to you today is to invite him into that space, to allow him to bring out beauty out of this hardship, to allow him to embrace you and provide the comfort that you need. It's interesting that even up to this week, I have actually been unwell and it was a very crappy situation to be in. You're frustrated, you're sick, everything is just not working, you're in bed. But I've, I've seen God in those spaces of darkness. This week, I think I've reconnected with God at a level that I've not in, in a few months, just because I was at a point of vulnerability. I was at a point of um, looking for comfort and hope and peace, and I found that in God. So don't take my word for it. I'm inviting you guys to invite God into these spaces, into these painful situations that nobody else is bringing a solution to, these painful situations that you don't even know how to move from. I promise you that there's a God who's able to help you navigate that and bring out something beautiful from it. So as we get into this time of reflection, just invite God into that space. Be real. I know many times pastors, we like preaching the cute messages and we, we want to sugarcoat everything, but this is a very real someone. So be real with God and tell him, this is where I'm at. This is painful. This is hard. I'm frustrated. I'm feeling all these things, but I'm inviting you into this space. So as we get into this reflection, I ask that God will be able to speak to your heart, even as you open up to me. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell that you're pleased and that I'm never alone You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am for answers far and wide but I know we all searching for answers only you provide and you know just what we need before we serve world you're a good good father it's who you It's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good friend.
find assurance, Lord, 
For in John 1, verse 12, you tell us that for those who have believed and for those who have received, to them you have given the right to be called children of God. So Father God, we believe that no one can take that birthright from us because as long as we believe, oh God, it's a gift of being a child that you have given to us. And you are a good, good Father. You're perfect in all of your ways, Lord. And everything that we do, everything that we ask for, the word says that even earthly fathers give good gifts to their children. What about our Father in heaven? So we believe that you are a good Father. You care about our worries, what we're going to eat today, tomorrow, what we're going to wear. You care about all that detail, Father. So right now, we trust in these words that we sing right now that we are perfect in all of your ways. Though we go through ups and downs in life, we know that, Lord, you care for us. Because we are your children. Thank you, Father God. And I'm loved by you. your emotions many times people who don't even know what to say but somehow music just speaks to you and allows you to open up about things that are very real and very raw so i hope that that reflection has been a blessing to you and i just encourage you to keep opening up and just allowing god god is real i know many times church makes it look like you need to be put together for you to come and talk to this god but he's real he understands your realness and is not scared to get in there and be part of the pain. So allow me to pray for you guys. Lord, I thank you so much for everybody who's watching us today. I don't know at what point they find themselves. I don't know what kind of pain or suffering that they are having to endure. But I know that you are a real God and that you're not far removed from our situations, but that you're willing to come to our level, to be part of this pain and suffering. That even your own son was not born into royalty and luxury but he was born in a manger so that we, he can identify with the things that we go through he can understand our suffering and so we can approach you with honesty and rawness knowing that you're a god who understands so right now i just want to speak um comfort over everybody who's watching us that whatever it is that they're struggling with at this point whatever it is that has made them question your existence or whether you even care that Lord, right now your spirit would just cover them, that you would hug them, that feel your embrace, your love, and that you'd begin to shine your light in this darkness that they, are, that they feel is engulfing them. I thank you for your peace, which many times you have given me even in the midst of insanity, for your joy that you have released many times even when things are falling apart. May everybody who's watching me right now experience this kind of peace and joy, and may they find their hope and comfort in you, knowing that we we have a God who understands and who loves us. So we give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, and we pray all this feeling and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us, and have a blessed you are in all of your ways. You are Cool.
Good father.